y'all it's your boy tevin jameer back at it again with another episode of the hate it or love it podcast so yeah um y'all know i didn't drop an episode last week but this week we back again here to talk to y'all about some things um there isn't really too much like news going on out there that i want to cover and stuff like that this week is just more entertainment stuff i mean that's how the past few weeks really been but you know the, this week is really just about me giving my thoughts on movies and shows that's been coming out and even one song, which I have a lot to say about. But um, yeah, so with all that out of the way, let's get to it. Um, the first topic that I want to talk about this week is the brand new Kendrick Lamar, Baby Keem song, The Hillbillies. And I'm going to keep it real, y'all. I don't really like that song. I, I'm going to keep it real. Like, the first time I heard it was the only time I heard it and the only time I'm going to go out my way to hear it. Because I'm going to keep it real, man. I'm a big Kendrick. Look, y'all, if y'all been watching the podcast, you know I'm a big Kendrick Lamar fan. Like, I love Kendrick Lamar's music. Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers is a very underrated album. I don't care what nobody has to say, but... Yeah, nah, man. This this song, The Hillbillies, it ain't it. And I don't know. See, I, I can say that I can say that I don't really like the song like that. Like, I won't knock Kendrick though, because he, he sounds like he's having fun on the song. And that's one thing that I like for my artists to do. I like for them to have fun when they're making music and not everything has to be like totally hella serious and stuff like that. I'm all for Kendrick Lamar having fun. Like one of his songs that he says that he hate that he recorded, Bitch, I'm in the Club, or something like that. Like, he says he hated that song, but I loved it just because it was, like, one of the few times that Kendrick is just having fun with it. Like, he's not trying to be too serious or nothing like that. So, I don't have a problem with it being very, like, laid back or anything like that. But, I don't know. It's just the type of style that, and this goes into my bigger problem with the song, it just, I don't like when Kendrick works with Baby Keem. I'm sorry, I just don't. And it's partly because I don't really like Baby Keem as an artist. And, you know, I'm not disrespecting him as a person or anything like that, but I just don't like Baby Keem as an artist. Like, I don't know how to describe his style or anything like that, but it just, when him and Kendrick get on that hillbilly you know, type style that they be rapping on and shit like that. Well, I don't really like anything from Baby Keem. And I'm not trying to sound like a hater, but I really just don't like anything from Baby Keem. I'm just being for real. Like, I tried listening to his album. I only got through, like, four to five songs. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'm type done with this. Um, you know, I just, I just really don't like Baby Keem's style and... When Kendrick hops on it, for the most part, I really don't like it either. Like, you know, Range Brothers, I think that's the name of the song where Kendrick keeps saying top of the morning, top of the morning. I didn't even really like that song either. It just, I just found it funny that he just kept saying top of the morning. And then um, Family Ties, which I think is their biggest song together. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. That's probably the only song that Kendrick and Keem are on together. I mean, besides the songs from Mr. Morale. But, you know, that might be the only song where Kendrick hopped on Baby Keem's song. And I actually liked his part. And I actually skip over Baby Keem's part just to get to Kendrick's. And like I said, I tr I'm not trying to sound like a hater. Like, I'm just trying to express... I don't even know how to describe Baby Keem's style. But, like, when him and Kendrick does it together, I just don't like it. Like, it, it's kind of weird because I don't like when Kendrick hops on Baby Keem style, but when Baby Keem hops on Kendrick style, like when he did the hook for Savior and the Mr. Morale interlude, like I was fine with Baby Keem then, but I don't, I, I don't like when Kendrick hops on a song. And I mean, the Hillbillies, it seems like this is, you know, a equal, like it's equally both their songs. So I can't say one is hopping on the other style. But I just didn't like the song like that. Like, 
And like I said, I'm not trying to sound like no hater and anything like that, but I just don't like Baby Keem's music and I just can't rock with it. I just can't get with it. And, you know, no hate to Baby Keem. He has had performances that I did like the few times he was on the Black Panther soundtrack. And like I said, when he was on Mr. Morale, like I, I enjoyed his contribution to those stuff, but I just can't rock with it. I, I'll say this. It's not for me. Like, in a lot of situations, there's there's some artists that I question, like, why are they as popular as they are? Like, one like two people that I question why they're so popular. NBA Youngboy, I like his music, but I don't see why he's as popular as he is. And a lot of the reasons that people say he's as popular as he is, like, you know, how real he keeps it and stuff like that. Like, we've seen a lot of rappers keep it real. So a lot of the reasons that people say that NBA Youngboy is as popular as he is, you know, I just don't... Like, NBA Youngboy, I can see why he is popular, but why he's as popular as he is just don't make sense to me. So, you know, I don't get it, but I can understand why he's popular. Travis Scott, you know, he's another one where I can get why he's popular, but why he's as popular as he is, because I don't feel like he does anything too different from others. Like, Travis does have a very good style, and he does use the auto-tune, atmospheric type of sound pretty well, the party sound pretty well, but I just don't see what makes him fully stand out, if you guys get what I'm saying. But Baby Keem, and like I said, I'm not trying to sound like no hater, but with Baby Keem, I don't get why he's popular, if I'm going to be honest. Like, it's just not for me. And I, I came to the realization, like, I'm not trying to be rude. I don't go out my way to hate on him. I really did check this song out because I saw that it came from Kendrick Lamar's Twitter. Like, I was there when Kendrick... Twitter like first put the song out I instantly hit the link because I thought it was like another music video for another Mr. Morale song but then I heard that and I'm just like eh. and like hey look like I said it, it wasn't for me so you know if if uh, Baby Keen and Kendrick Lamar collab mixtape comes out I feel like I'm going to check it out mostly for Kendrick Lamar. Like, if Kendrick did, if Kendrick, you know, wowed me on the Hillbillies, I would still be listening to it just like I do with, um, just like I do with Family Ties. Like, I don't have to rely on, you know, the other artists to do good for me to enjoy the other artists' part. Like, you know, some collab albums that I like where I like one artist but I don't really like the other was Fan of a Fan, the Chris Brown and Tyga mixtape. Like, both actually, both the mixtape and the album. Like, I don't like Tyga's music at all. There's only a select few songs that I like, but, you know, I checked out that album for Chris Brown, and, you know, I still go back for songs that you know, I feel like hi like highlights Chris Brown's talents and Tyga is just kind of there. So if Baby Keem and, and Kendrick was to put out a collab album or anything like that, I would check out the album just to see what Kendrick's contribution is. But if Baby Keem does good, I'm going to give him his props. So like, I'm not trying to sound like no hater. I'm not trying to sound disrespectful, but I'm just saying that so far, Baby Keem hasn't really put out anything that's exactly for me or anything that I particularly like because, you know, that's just it. Like, I'm not, like I said, I got to keep prefacing this because everybody is going to, I feel like there's someone, if anyone does comment, I feel like there's going to be someone in the comments talking about, oh, you're just a hater. You just don't like, he just make more money than you. Like, I don't, it, I'm not trying to sound rude or anything like that. It's just, I can't rock with Baby Keem. It's, it's the same way that I feel about Gunna. I can't rock with Gunna. And it's not because the whole snitching thing, like I've been, didn't really like Gunna's music like that. And hella people are trying to get me on the Gunna. And some people would call me, a, like, some people would call me a hater for not liking Gunna's music. Even though, I feel like to be a hater, you have to go out of your way to, like, disrespect the person. Like, you know you don't like their album, so you go to listen to the album just so you can find something to rant about. That's not me. I don't, like, I'm not going to check out somebody if I know I'm not going to like their stuff. So, you know, I just leave it at that. Like I said, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but the Hillbillies just wasn't it for me. If they do put out a collab album, I hope every song does not sound like that or else that's going to be like a rough listen for me. But if they were to come out with a collab album, I wouldn't mind it because, you know, 
while I don't like Baby Keem's music right now, one thing about me, I'm always up for someone to change my mind. I'm always up for an artist to put out something that I like. So, who knows? If Baby Keem and Kendrick put out this collab album and there is a song where Baby Keem does amazing on it, then I will gladly say, because I want to like Baby Keem, especially since he's Kendrick Lamar's cousin. I want to like him. You know, if, if there is a song that they put out on that album and, you know, things are good on there then i won't deny that he did good on the album like i'm not someone that's going to sit here and deny whether somebody did good or not so it is what it is um the hillbillies i thought wasn't really that great of a song but if you guys enjoy it then i'm glad that somebody enjoyed it but it's it's not for me and also the whole thing about them stealing that style from drake come on bro Get the fuck out of here with that. I wish people would stop saying that Drake created the house style or popularized it. Because it was popular back in the day. And if we want to keep it real now, Beyonce and and Drake. Okay, I will say that Drake helped, you know, make it mainstream again. But it's not even like people be using that style that much. And I don't really think they stole the song from Drake or like... Because some people were saying that the beat sounds very similar to Sticky. I, I don't think they were inspired by Drake when they did that because, you know, when you hear people in the industry talk about what happens in the industry, they make it pretty clear that everybody kind of knows what somebody else is already doing. So, actually, that just made it sound like they did steal it. But, basically, I'm just saying that they did not steal it, in my opinion. The song did not make me think of Sticky, and I actually like Sticky. Like, I don't like the Honestly Nevermind album, but Sticky was one of the ones that I do go back to listen to regularly. So, and this is someone that listens to that song regularly. Like, if I listened to the Hillbillies and I didn't hear Sticky, I really don't think they stole it from him. And, of course, what I'm saying is, in fact, maybe, I mean, if they did, we'll never really know. But, like, in my opinion, I didn't really think they stole it from him. You know, the beats, I don't think even, I don't even think they really even sound that similar. And I don't even think that it sounds like a house style, like house rap style type song. So, I don't know. It just don't make sense to me that people um, believe that. So... The next topic I want to talk about, and I feel like this is the big talking point for this week, and that is Across the Spider-Verse. How did I feel about the album? I mean, the movie. Whew, if you follow me on Instagram, which I'm taking a social media break right now, so I don't know. I don't know uh, if you guys do, but um, I'm taking a social media break as of me filming this episode. But if you guys have not seen Across the Spider-Verse yet, go watch that movie. Across the Spider-Verse, I'm not going to lie, off the first time watching it, and I'm not going to lie, I might even try to talk my cousin into seeing it again tomorrow when we hang out, but, yo, Across the Spider-Verse is one of the best movies of all time to me now, just off the first watch, and, you know... I'm not trying to sound biased or like a Marvel dick rider or anything like that, but like, yo, this movie was made for Spider-Man fans. Like, let's just get all the references and Easter eggs out of the way or whatever. If you have been a long time Spider-Man fan as far as like movies, TV shows, games, and all of that, then you were able to pick out like a lot of Easter eggs. Like for me, I was sitting there looking at a lot of Easter eggs. I was surprised that they had Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. Like not they it's not like he did anything active in the movie. They used past footage from uh Amazing Spider-Man 2. Actually no, Amazing Spider-Man 1. But they had him in there, Toby Maguire, they used the scenes from the first Spider-Man movie in this one. Um you had PS4 Spider-Man in there, which I only played a little bit of the PS4 game, mostly because I never owned it. I just only played it when I was at one of my friend's places or like when I back when I was in uh, George Mason, one of my friends had the game and he was letting me play like a little bit of it. So, you know, you got to see a little bit of PS4 Spider-Man. Um, I forget the name of this show, but there was like a Spider-Man show that was on Disney XD. That Spider-Man was on there. Um... It, it was just amazing to see, like, all the different Spider-Men in the movie. And 
I think I should tell you this now. If you guys don't want spoilers, then don't watch this episode because when I talk about movies, I get into spoilers. So I think the biggest Easter egg for me and the one that I became the most excited for was the fact that Donald Glover, as the Prowler from the MCU, was in this movie. So there was a specific, there was a specific scene when Miles went to... Um, the headquarters for all the spider people and they got to see all the villains that they captured for um you know throughout this all the different spider-man universe and one of them was the prowler if you guys watched the first spider-man movie from the mcu if you guys watched spider-man homecoming there's a scene where peter actually meets up with donald glover who plays miles uncle who as we all know is the prowler and in this movie, he was actually captured. So in a way, this movie kind of made Spider-Verse canon with the MCU, which is crazy for me because then that means that eventually we will get a live-action Miles Morales movie, which they already confirmed as Sony. But we'll hold on to that because I have some fan castings that I would like to suggest if anybody wants to join in with me or anything like that. But yeah, um... This movie was damn near perfect to me. Like, when I think, uh, like, you know the saying that nothing is perfect? This is one of those movies that are damn near close to it. Like, as a, and it's not even just because of the Spider-Man, like, Easter eggs and stuff like that, but even just the heart of this movie. I feel like, and I, I know I'm regurgitating what most of the internet is saying right now, but everything great about Into the Spider-Verse, I feel like they dialed it up times 10 with this one. Like... Especially with the heart in this movie. Because this one, I would say, is a lot more of a mature and darker one than Into the Spider-Verse. Like, Into the Spider-Verse had its darker moments. It had its more, like, serious, mature moments. But it was mostly a lot of comedic fun and stuff like that. But this movie, if I had to describe it, like... If I had to... Dis if I had to... Okay, comparing. Um... If I had to compare Into the Spider-Verse and Across the Spider-Verse, I would say Into the Spider-Verse is like the first season of Avatar The Last Airbender. Very comedic, has serious moments, but this is more just a establishing type movie and like it's still fun and stuff like that. Across the Spider-Verse definitely feels like season two of Avatar. We dial up the seriousness, we add more to the lore, we look more into like the characters that we already know about, and I feel like that's one of the biggest pluses for this movie, is that it explores a lot about Miles' family, and especially Gwen's family. Like, the storyline between her and her dad, which, by the way, I cannot stand when people say that this movie doesn't have a satisfying conclusion. First off, this movie was announced as a part one. Even if you're not, like, a big Spider-Man fan, I feel like as popular as Into the Spider-Verse was, because even people that's not even big Spider-Man fans, I've known, like, with Into the Spider-Verse movies. If you aren't even the biggest Spider-Man fan, you should have at least known when they announced this that this was a part one. So that's one thing. Two, this movie was very, like, fulfilling for me as far as the conclusion, because... Think about it. The movie starts with Gwen Stacy. We learn more about her backstory and we've seen what happened with her and her dad. And at the end of the movie, we finally get a conclusion to that. But, and other, and I feel like there's in little small ways, in other small ways, I feel like we still get a proper conclusion, even with Miles' point of view. Like, Throughout the movie, he was struggling to balance, you know, being Spider-Man and being Miles and, like, trying to figure out what he wanted to do. And even throughout the movie, like, different Spider-People, his family, you know, his Spider-Friends like Gwen and Peter, they were all telling him what they expected him to do. And in this movie, he finally decides, you know what, I'm not going to do what everybody wants me to do. I'm going to do my own thing. And that's the that's one of the small victories and small conclusions I feel like we get in this movie because, you know, he was trying to find a balance. He was trying to deal with with expectations. And in the end, he's choosing to pave his own path, despite what the canon and what any other Spider-Man had to say. But also where he so at the end of the movie, he ends up 
if you guys watch this movie, then you know that the spider that bit him in the first movie was actually from a different universe. So, you know, everybody was saying that, or Miguel was saying that he wasn't even supposed to become Spider-Man because that spider was supposed to bite someone else in that universe, but it wound up in Miles' universe. And in this movie, Miles travels back at the end. He travels back to what he thought was his universe, but it's actually the universe where the spider that bit him was originally from. And in the end, he does wind up finally revealing to his mom that he is Spider-Man, because that was one of the tough decisions that he was contemplating with throughout the whole movie. But like I said, it's in a different universe from his own. So I feel like even though he didn't, you know, expose himself to his real parents, like in his actual universe, I still feel like it's a small win because now we know what he wants to ultimately do once he gets back. He wants to save his dad despite what everybody has to say, and he still wants to tell his family about who he is. So I feel like in that aspect, you still get little small conclusions for Miles, but more of the conclusion with this movie really has to do with Gwen because that's what they kept saying. And this is me, like, you know, I'm someone, I'm, of course, I say I want to be in the film industry. I'm big on film. So I like to listen to what a lot of the filmmakers are saying. And the filmmakers kept making it clear this is a Gwen and Miles movie. This is a Miles and Gwen movie. Like, they made it clear multiple times that this movie is about Gwen Stacy almost just as much as it is about Miles. So, I feel like I went in with the right mindset and I went in with the right expectations, but... For people that don't really know about that or miss the announcements, I still feel like there's enough here to keep you satisfied until next year when the next movie comes out, which, yo, I cannot wait for this next movie to come out. Like, I, I'm, like I said, y'all, I'm a big Spider-Man fan, so, like, when this, yo, honestly, this movie is my favorite movie of the year. Favorite movie of the year. Like, before, for a while, my favorite movie of the year was Creed 3. And, of course, I'll do my movie listings at the end of the year on the podcast. But, like, my favorite movie of the year for a while was Creed 3. But this movie takes the cake. Not only is it one of my favorite movies of the year, but I honestly say that, and I'm not saying this, like, off of recency bias or anything like that, but... Everything was damn near perfect about this movie to me. The acting, the animation, the music, the drama. Like, everything in this movie was damn near perfect to me. Like, Into the Spider-Verse is like an 8.5 movie for me. This movie is honestly a 9.5. And the only gripe that I have with this movie is... A lot of people are saying that The Spot was a great villain in this, in this movie... I don't really think he was a great villain in this movie, but I think he has a great setup. I feel like people is confusing, you know, being a great villain with the potential that he has as a villain. Because this movie did a good thing where it sets him up to be a crazy villain for the next movie. So, I don't have any doubt that he is going to be a good villain in the next movie, but I didn't see him as too much of a threat in this movie. Which I feel like they did that somewhat on purpose. Because, you know, even throughout the movie, they kept being, they kept making a joke saying like, oh, he's just the villain of the week, which this movie, I feel like was basically his build up to becoming a bigger, better villain. So while he wasn't the most threatening villain in this movie, I feel like this movie did set a lot of good setup to where he is going to be like a very threatening villain in the next movie. So yeah, like this movie is amazing like i'm not even trying to exaggerate this movie is amazing it's up there with some of my favorite movies of all time like the hangover and uncut gems and and like yo this movie is like one of the best movies ever i don't know someday i might have to do like my favorite movies all time of all time list for the podcast so that you guys can know what it is but like this movie was a like yo when I say this movie deserves to be in like an art museum or like it needs to be, it needs to be preserved. Like don't ever let this movie die out. Like this is one of the best things that happened for Spider-Man fans. Not even just because of the Easter eggs, but just how amazing of a movie it was. And even if you take all the Easter eggs out, 
this movie still had a lot of heart. It still had me on the edge of my seat. The fight scenes were amazing. You know, the story with Miles and Gwen was great. So I feel like this movie had everything that I was expecting. And I feel like in a lot of ways it exceeded what I was expecting as well. Like I was expecting another 8.5 or a 9. But I wound up getting like one of the best, one of the best movies I've ever seen. So I'm really looking forward to Beyond the Spider-Verse. I'm not going to let, you know my wild thoughts and hype get to me but this movie was a great one kudos to everybody that was behind the scenes and i cannot wait for the third one but with me talking about across the spider-verse that leads me into my next topic and the next topic is like i said they announced that they're gonna make a live action miles morales movie now i hope it's not i i hope I hope it's not part of the Sony-verse, which technically I guess you can't even say that anymore because with Spider-Verse, I mean, with Across the Spider-Verse, they kind of made the MCU and the Sony-verse canon to each other. Well, they then did that with, with No Way Home as well. So, like, all these movies are pretty much connected now. So, when I say the live-action Miles Morales movie, I hope that it takes place within the MCU universe. That's what I'm hoping. So when I say any, when I say everything I'm about to say, I want it to correlate with the MCU universe, and I hope that this Miles Morales is going to be taught by Tom Holland's Spider-Man. So just saying that before I get into it. Today, I wanted to do a fan casting for who I think should play Miles in the MCU, and I have three picks, and I'm very confident in all three of these picks. I will give reasons why. One of them is kind of a wild card, but I will give my three reasons, or I will give y'all the three people, and I'll give you my reasons why. So I'm going to save my number one choice for last, but one person I would like to play Miles Morales, and knowing the MCU and knowing Marvel, they probably already have this actor lined up, but... These are just fan castings, you know, I, I just want to throw it out there. And, and just as a disclaimer, no, one of them is not Jaden Smith. People want Jaden Smith to play, um, Don, I mean, not Donald Glover, Miles Morales, which Donald Glover is the inspiration for Miles Morales. But all right, um, no, I did not pick Jaden Smith. I picked three other people and these are three other actors. And not that Jaden Smith isn't a good actor, but I picked three other actors that I feel like will also serve the role pretty well. So, all right, the first actor, and I'll put them like somewhere on the side of the screen or something. The first actor is Alex Hibbert. Now, if you guys haven't seen him, he played in Moonlight. He played um, the little kid version of Chiron, if you watch Moonlight. If you guys also watch The Shy, he plays Kevin. And to me, Alex Hipper is a great actor, but I don't feel like... I feel like after Moonlight, he wasn't getting as much roles as he should be getting, which maybe that has to do with The Shy, because he went straight from Moonlight to The Shy. So... I feel like he hasn't had been I feel like he hasn't been getting those major film roles that I feel like he should be getting after Moonlight but you know I don't knock him doing the shy either because he is essentially like one of the main characters of the shy if if not he is the main character of the shy at this point so it is cool to see that he went from one major film that won a lot of awards to being a lead on a TV show. And even now, he's still the lead of The Shy. So it is amazing to see all that he's done so far. And I feel like he... I feel like he would do a good job playing Miles. The only thing I will say is one part with playing Miles is, you know, Miles is... I think he's half Rican, so he would have to learn Spanish and stuff like that. I don't even know if Alex Hibbert learns Spanish or anything like that, but I feel like he would make a great actor for Miles. I feel like him being in Moonlight and The Shy does show that he has acting range. He has funny moments in The Shy, but The Shy is mostly a drama series, so... I know I I I feel like he has the acting ability, but he also has the comedic chops to like you know do some funny quips and stuff like that. So yeah, Alex Hibbert is one of my choices. Second is Miles Brown. Um, he played the youngest son in 
he played the youngest son in Blackish, and I actually seen on Twitter that he actually wants to play Miles Morales. And the funny thing is, he said like he would enjoy it, especially since his name is already Miles. So you know, he's my wild card because I never seen him do anything serious. Blackish is more like a comedic show, so I never seen him play a serious role, but. The fact that he's up for the challenge, I do like that, and he wasn't really that bad in Blackish. Like, despite how I felt about later seasons of Blackish, I still feel like he did a pretty good job. Not to mention, he's already working for um, Disney. He already worked for Disney, you know, of course, with Blackish because Disney owns ABC. So, I feel like that's already him somewhat getting his foot in the door over there. So, I would, I would enjoy him playing Miles, but my number one pick, if you guys know me, you guys probably already know my number one pick. My number one pick for who should play Miles Morales is Michael Rainey Jr., the boy who plays Tariq from Power. So, all right, we all know I'm a big Power fan. We all know that. But here's my reasons Here's my reasons for why I think he should play Miles Morales. And he's my number one pick. One, he's a young man. He already looks he looks young enough to play a teenager if they want to introduce Miles as a teenager. Um, he has the acting. I feel like he has definitely the acting ability. Just like what I said with my... I mean, just like what I said with uh, Alex Hibbert. Um... You know, he's plays on power, so he's like a like power is a action crime dramedy. I mean not dramedy, drama. So he has the drama side. Like I said, it's a it's an action crime show, so like he already down with action scenes. And one of the biggest selling points to me, now while this is in Spanish, um, Michael Rainey Jr. has actually learned a whole language for a film before. And actually, it was his first film when he was a little kid. He learned Italian, and he still knows how to speak Italian pretty well. Hell, even in Power, like, this, Power is completely different from the show. I mean, from the movie that he did when he was younger. But even in Power, there's random scenes throughout the Power universe where... He'll switch from English to Italian at random points. So it already shows that he can be dedicated to do action scenes. You know, he's a he's about the right age range for it. And um, he can learn another language pretty easily, just like he did when he was younger learning Italian. And that's something that still sticks with him. Another thing is, he also said that he is willing to do it. I remember there was an episode on his podcast where they talked about Miles Morales and he said like he he said it jokingly but I can see him actually taking it serious. He said that he wouldn't mind playing Miles and I feel like another big aspect to why he can play Miles. Now I don't know about the other two. I don't know if Alex and Miles are from here, but as far as Michael Rainey Jr., he is born and raised in New York. So I feel like if you want that more like authentic New York feel, you can get Michael Rainey Jr. on there. So, you know, there's a good chance. And oh, yeah, not to mention, I think I think Michael Rainey Jr., the way he styles his hair and stuff like that, I feel like he looks very accurate to like comic book miles. So that's another reason I feel like he's my number one pick. But now I don't know if I don't know if the, if like. Marvel would want to cast him, especially since he's already doing, you know, he's already the lead of a universe with the power universe. So I don't know if that would be like a good choice for him to like hop back and forth being a very important role. Cause let's keep it real. Spider-Man is always an important character when it comes to Marvel. So if they were to introduce miles into the MCU, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't want to lock that, um, that actor's, um, schedule down tight. But with Michael doing a show like Power, and then he would join the MCU, which you have to sign on to multiple projects and stuff like that, I don't know if he would be able to do it, like, as far as scheduling-wise, but for every other reason, I feel like he would be the perfect Miles Morales. The Like, he, he already has um, experience in drama and action. I feel like he looks very comic book accurate to how, com to how uh, Miles looks. He's willing to learn a language. 
And he said before that he would be down for it. And he's from New York. So I feel like a lot is going pretty well for Miles. I mean, for Michael to be Miles Morales. But at the end of the day, I'm fine with any actor they pick for Miles Morales, to be honest. Because at the end of the day, I think I said it before that I'm all for like more new upcoming black actors getting roles. So if they decide to hire somebody that we never seen before, I would be just fine with that. If they decide to hire any of the people that I said, you know, that would be cool. But at the end of the day, I'm just hyped to see like young black actors being able to play a prominent role like that. So yeah, I, that was my fan casting. If you guys, you know, know those actors, if you're fans of them, or if there's other actors that you're or if there's other actors you feel like would fit the role a lot better, then, you know, just put it down in the comments, like, talk about it, and, um, yeah, and if you guys don't know those actors, I urge you, please check out their work, Alex Hibbert, Moonlight, The Shy, Miles Brown, I only really know him from Blackish, and then Michael Rainey Jr., like I said, The Power Universe, um, I think he has a Netflix movie called Amateur, so, yeah, definitely check out, um, check his stuff out and oh yeah one more thing for michael rainey jr he has said that i think after this season of power whether i think i i seen an article where he said like after season four of power like he wants to start expanding more to like different roles and film roles and stuff like that so marvel if you guys are still looking for a miles morales i would say definitely definitely think about michael rainey jr so that's all I had to say. Like I said, let me know how y'all feel about my fan picks. Let me know your fan picks. And hey, let's talk about it. And if you guys like the idea of anybody, even if in, even if in the comments you guys name a different young actor, if you guys like it, let's start a GoFundMe. Let's do something. Let's help these young black actors get that prominent role. So yeah, that's all I have to say about that. The last topic that I have for this week and I know this is a very short episode, but the last topic that I have for this week is about The Idol, the new weekend series. And I think Johnny Depp's daughter is Lily Rose Depp. I think that's her name. Let me look it up real quick. Let me look. Uh, the Idol. Yep, Lily Rose Depp. All right, so... The first episode, as of me filming this, the first episode came out last night, and what do I think about it? I was, I, I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of bored. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. Like, some people was tweeting about the show, talking about how, first off, there was a lot of controversy before the show even came out, with like stuff from the original script leaking, and there was like a lot of disturbing things. Sam Levinson, especially after Euphoria season two, hasn't had the best, you know, track record for things. So like, there was a lot of controversy coming up. But I'm not gonna lie, the biggest offense that this show has is how fucking boring it is. I ain't even gonna hold y'all. Like the first episode was boring as hell, and when it ended. I was like, really? That's it? That's where y'all decide to end this shit at? So, I'm gonna keep watching. Hopefully, the show gets better. And I'm looking past all the controversy, because, to be honest, a lot of the controversy we have been hearing is more just hearsay, he say, she say type stuff. I haven't really seen too much concrete stuff besides that script. But, yeah, like... I don't know, man. The Idol, it just ain't really... It ain't really it for me like that. It ain't like... It's not that the acting was bad. And of course with Sam Levinson, you're always going to get good direction and cinematography and stuff like that. Like, I don't think the filmmaking aspect is bad, but it's just the story and what they did with the first episode just feels very boring. I don't feel like they made the right decision on like how fast the story is supposed to go and stuff like that. Like the first episode was very boring to me. Like I said, this, this first episode was just boring. I hope they really pick it up as the show goes on. But, you know. And it also, it doesn't help that this show is a miniseries. So it's kind of like with a miniseries, I feel like you guys got to kind of like, let's get to this shit. Like, let's get to the bullshit. But, 
I don't know, man. This this episode just wasn't it for me. Like I said, I'm going to still keep checking it out. But if by episode three this shit is still boring to me, I'm just going to drop it. Like, it ain't that worth it. And this is a mini series, guys. I keep seeing people on Twitter saying, like, oh, don't hate watch it because it can get renewed for a second season. First off, when did finally people finally start understanding that hate watching ruins it? Like, that's what happened with Velma. You guys keep saying that hate watching, um, or you guys kept hate watching Velma and now we're getting a season two of that shit. So I don't know when y'all finally realized it, but thank you for finally realizing it. But here's the thing, y'all, y'all realized it during the wrong fucking show because, um, the idol was announced as a mini series. So I'm pretty sure if it's a mini series, this is going to be its only season. I'm pretty sure it's going to have a final conclusion by the end of the season. So you guys are saying all of this during the wrong show. So, I mean, thank you for getting the message, but y'all guys, y'all guys kind of got it late, got it kind of late. Like <laughs> what are y'all doing? But, um, yeah, that was about it. Um, for any of the topics I talked about today, across the spider verse, the hillbillies, Miles Morales fan casting or the idol. Let me know how y'all feel down below. Um, you know, I'm sorry y'all that these episodes haven't been as long as old ones and stuff like that. And we're not really touching too much on like the news and stuff like that. I feel like there was definitely a lot more going on last year and before and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I'd be trying to have guests on and whatever, but a lot of scheduling conflicts and stuff like that, but you know, we're going to get it sorted out. We're going to have some guests on. I actually know one person that wants to guest star so bad, but I haven't gave them the chance yet. So maybe soon I'll give them that chance. Let them guest star and whoop de whoop and whatever. <laughs> but all right, y'all. Um, with all that being said, Tevin Jameer signing out. See you on the next one.